who are here, all of you who are following us on the internet at this time live, and all who will follow us at some later time. It is a very pretty day out there, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> you know, when you stand up here, you have a better appreciation for what Pastor says. Everybody's in the back. <laughs> come forward. It's, it's quite interesting. And in the, uh, obviously, I'm not Pastor Barb, and Pastor Barb will be returning tomorrow. So we, I believe we will have our uh, uh, final study and other activities as usual this coming week. Are there any announcements? Uh, I'm not aware of any other than that. Anybody? No. You know, we are very fortunate as a church, uh, if you think about it. But we have an incredible pianist here, a concert trained pianist here, and she does a phenomenal job. We have hymnists that lead us in, in our church praise on Sunday, and, and we're lucky that we have people that are talented enough to do that. You know, you're lucky it's not me. <laughs> you don't hear the braying of the donkey or the if you think. We have a, and a choir. We're fortunate to have a choir that, again, talented in their, in their singing. And what an incredible choir director. A voice, I tell you, it's, it's, it's just phenomenal. It gives me chills every time I hear her sing. So, and then, of course, we've got Travis with his technical know-how who provides us with our, our leadership there on the screen. That's just phenomenal. We are very fortunate in, in all of this. We are also fortunate Pastor said, oh boy, am I going on or am I going on? Uh, you know, we're also fortunate turning to, to uh, the, the church. We're also fortunate that we have Jesus. You know, Pastor, last Sunday she came out and she says, he is raised. And we said, he is raised indeed. Three times we repeated that. But to really think about that in, in terms of reality, I mean, we've had a number of funerals, unfortunately, lately. But we've never seen anybody sit up and come out of their coffin. But Jesus actually did that. He actually, he was put to death, a spear in, in his side, nails in his, in his hands and feet, and he actually came back to life. Came back and had meals, and came back and talked. It, it was just, it kind of boggles my mind. Uh, anyway, to, um, to celebrate this morning, you all have one in your in your packets. Um, the readings and the psalm are not what we're going to do today, nor is the gospel. If you uh, check your your bulletin, you'll see that. Uh, the first reading is Colossians, and the gospel is then Luke, from Luke. Um, and in that, I will read the first reading, and then we will go to the hymn, What a Fellowship. And then Travis will put on the pastor, and she will read the gospel and continue on into the sermon. Now, back to the celebrating. Just because we're not reading these doesn't mean that they're bad in any manner. In fact, they're, they're pretty good. Uh, John is uh, doubting Thomas, and I'm sure you all remember that story. So that, that one is particularly good. Um, again, some of the other readings, they're, they're very good. I, I read through them. I wasn't sure what I was going to do at first, and then I got the material from Pastor Tom. So... <coughs> Let's see, let us progress now, if you will please stand, and we will go to Confession and Forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Take a moment. 
moment for reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. I will be at them, and I will be at them from them. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, forgive us, so that we may delight in your will, and we may walk in your ways, and the glory of your holy name. Amen. Sorry, I got a little head. <laughs> God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We will sing our opening song. You may be seated. sing this today in support of the Ukrainians or in memory of the Ukrainians who are now fighting beneath the steel mill in the Ukraine. <laughs> Thank you. 
lesson for today is from Colossians 3, starting with the 12th verse. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all of these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in, dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So there's a reading. We'll have our gospel hymn. Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of all my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. 
And let us pray. Gracious Lord, how thankful we are for the gift of relationships. And we ask that you would teach us to celebrate those relationships all the more, day in and day out. We thank you for your relationship with us. The fact that you invite us out of our tree. Send your Holy Spirit, O oh God, to move within us and around us. And may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you and to you alone, for you are our Redeemer. Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. Well, grace to you and peace from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who was, who is, and who will always be. Relationships. In fact, for the next few weeks, there's eight weeks total, and this is the second of those eight weeks, we're going to celebrate, celebrate all kinds of things. And last week on Easter Sunday, it was a celebration of new life in Christ. As you can tell from the cross behind me, we still have beauty here. What a wonderful thing to have the flowers blossoming. And today, what Jesus calls for us is blossoming of relationships and the ability to celebrate those relationships. When I looked in the dictionary under relationships, it said the state of being connected by blood or marriage. The way in which two or more concepts, objects, or people are connected or the state of being connected. An emotional or sexual association between two people. And then they threw in all kinds of other words. Besides connection, it was link, association, correlation, correspondence, tie-in, tie-up, alliance, bond, interrelationship, interconnection, kinship. I've said too many words already, haven't I? We all know what relationship is, and it's not a word. It's between people. And we have relationships right from the beginning of our life. When you were born, your parents welcomed you in. And most parents already had names in the back of their mind as to what they wanted to call you. I know my mom did and my dad. They had already discussed all that. They didn't know whether I was going to be a girl or a boy, but there was a name. Names are part of relationships, aren't they? When you know someone's name, it takes them from being distant to being close to heart. And isn't that what a true relationship we need to celebrate is all about? In the gospel text for today, we have this marvelous story of Jesus' ability to know Zacchaeus' name. Now, Zacchaeus wasn't a great guy. Just so you know, he was one of the chief tax collectors. They hated tax collectors. They were Jewish people who decided they wanted to make money on their own people. So they worked for the Roman government. And the government said, you go do this, and then you can add on whatever taxes you want on top of that. So what happened in the midst of that was a break in relationship. A break from the leadership. A break from family. A break from all others except for those filthy tax collectors. And because he was a chief tax collector, he had other tax collectors under him. He got a piece of their pie. So this guy, this short man, who was already looked down upon, probably, for his stature, now had a stature problem. Relationships were out for him. My guess is he had heard things about Jesus, or he wouldn't have wanted to run ahead to see him, to find a place where he could look and see this one he had heard about. 
As he climbs the tree, you all know the story, right? Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as our Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. This man who had no relationships of any importance, who was ostracized from all those around him, and most likely whose parents had also shunned him and turned their backs on him, learned what relationship was all about. When Jesus saw him and he called his name, now this distant relationship that was unexpected became a close relationship. And did you hear what happened? The others looked in and they were scowling at him. And in fact, they even said, can you believe he's going to be a guest of a sinner? But Zacchaeus was so excited. His name was spoken by Jesus. He said, Lord, I will give back anything that I have cheated out here to the poor. And then I will pay back four times anything else. The relationship he had with Jesus changed him. When he climbed into that tree, a new relationship was formed. And that relationship, which was formed with Jesus because he climbed into the tree, he was able to celebrate at table with Jesus, to eat with him, to invite others to meet him, to know that it was now not just about finances. It wasn't just about what he had been doing. Now his life was totally open to something something greater. Not long after that, after Jesus' resurrection, he shows up at a locked room. He enters in to his disciples who had feared he was dead, who had hidden away even when he was on the cross. But a door couldn't stop him either. For Jesus, relationship is about knowing name, it's about knowing the heart, and it's about inviting others in. So, what does it mean for us? We have all kinds of relationships, right? When I was Googling Christian relationships, I was thinking, so I me, that maybe it would talk about Christian friendship and Christian uh, abilities to do things, how we do outreach, how do we invite people in. No, it was all about dating and marriage. <laughs> and that's part of it. Of course, relationships and dating and marriage and children and extended family, parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, all of that is part of it. But there are other relationships too. There are friendships. There are neighbors. There's church Christian friends that we've met at church. And maybe there's the relationship with the person you still haven't met. Or the relationship that you have because you give beyond the bounds. I think of our quilters and prayer shawl people here who are working diligently so that a neighbor, someone far away, who will never meet them has a relationship because they've received a prayer shawl, because they've been prayed for, not by name even, or a quilt. You see, it's endless, isn't it? God opens doors for us, and the question is, how do we connect in such ways that we can celebrate God's goodness in our family and among our friends 
See, we all climb into a dream, don't we? Don't we all climb someplace to be seen or to hide, one or the other? The most important relationship that starts everything off is right behind me. You see, that's a tree too. And when we climb into this tree, we are surrounded by the life-giving love of a God who has called us into a deep relationship with him. Isn't that something to celebrate? Or to invite others to climb in the tree with us? Our family members that seem disenfranchised or, or turn their backs on Christ, maybe by us sharing our love with them, not saying a whole lot. We envelop them in such a way that they would begin to see the power of this tree and the fact that Jesus calls their name too. Or maybe, just maybe, it's your neighbor you invite or someone who has no place to eat or maybe someone who is lonely. And in every meal you partake in, your family or friends, use it as an opportunity to celebrate the goodness of the relationship you're in. We are so blessed, aren't we? But Jesus knows our name. He has called us into the deepest relationship we could ever ask for. And now we in turn, when we know someone's name, can invite them in. Or if we don't, something I learned from my brother-in-law. When we go to a restaurant together, people come over to the table, of course, to take our order. And he says, oh, what was your name again? And as soon as he knows their name, he strikes up a conversation. When they come over the second time, he asks them a simple question. And then another question. And before we leave, even if we never see them again, there's a relationship. I had the experience with my niece when I was in Iowa on my way back last time. We went to this wonderful restaurant she wanted to go to and we had the most fun waitress. Her name was Megan. And as she was just jolly and coming over to check on us, I said, I bet you go to Iowa. And she said, oh yes. I said, what's the best thing about being at Iowa? And she said, I'm third generation Hawkeye. <laughs> and it opened up just a little discussion about her life. She came back later with the bill. It was too big for me. But anyway, she came back with the bill and she said, I just told my friends over there, this has been the greatest table of all. Relationships can be short and be long, but they all start for us as Christians when we climb into this tree. Celebrate the fact Jesus knows your name. And celebrate with others when you learn theirs. God's grace and peace. Let us pray. God, there is no greater tree than the tree that you climbed into for us. Help us to rest our life in that tree with you and to invite others into the shade of the cross. Help us to celebrate, to eat together, to enjoy one another, and to learn how to know each other. And the world will be so much better because of that. Amen. Now invite others to be here. Amen and amen. amen. <laughs> you may please stand and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only 
We really need to keep in mind the people of Ukraine who are actually in the physical siege, missiles, mortars, rockets, all of that. So free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to God for resurrection for the church, the people in need, and for all of creation. Holy One, who acts righteously, equip your church as witnesses of your goodness to go and tell others of your abundant love, that they may believe that Jesus is our salvation and life. God, in your mercy, Renew, renew your people's commitment to use resources responsibly and to live well within your creation. Invite us to recognize and nurture signs of resurrection and life in the natural world. God, in your mercy. Amen. Direct those who are given human authority to lead with humility and compassion. By your Holy Spirit, channel their attention towards serving those who are most in need. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Uphold your children who cry out to you, especially those in Ukraine. Let the shut-ins break in peace, help, comfort, and community. For Mila's family in Ukraine, Tracy, Tracy Stanley after the death of Sherry. Pastor Barb's mom, Mary Lou. Tim Washington, Dolores Rasmussen, Ruth Matthews and Dan Rasmussen. George Odenheimer, Ron Thun's sister, Marcia, Ron and the family. Mark and Miller, Tony Frank, Ray Johnson, we pray for continued healing. Dave Beadle, Bill Curry. Scott Sasser, Shelley's father in law. Ruben Varela. Davis Hoffman. Mike Bunger. And for Josh Carter, who is in rehabilitation. Whenever people, whenever people are overcome by the fear of death, breathe into them your life and peace. God, in your mercy. Amen. Inspire those who lead your people in worship and praise, especially those who have helped in our church. Melia Warner, Richard Lane, Kelly Newt Walker, Norman Red Green. With a joyful motion and sound, send us forth with praise that we cannot keep ourselves. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us the words of your saints who, like Thomas, boldly confess your Son as Lord and God. With Jesus our leader, empower us to live according to his ways. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And stand as we say the prayers of the Lord's Father. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his spot make May the Lord make his face to smile upon you and give you grace. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our closing hymn.